Hello my soccer universe, I'm sorry that I'm a bit late with my Europa League review, however you know, life sometimes gets in the way of making two videos on one day, which is always a little bit of a steep task, so shooting is late, let's see when this will post, I hope by the 5th in the morning you will be able to watch this video already. This Europa League evening was actually quite some fun. There were some really interesting games in there, most notably of course Portals 3-3 draw with United, however as I will say later, might not be enough for Ten Hag, to be honest. But the leaders after this round are of course Lazio, who not only got a big win against Dynamo Kiev and Ukrainian teams, we already saw it with Shakhtar, we saw it with Dynamo Kiev. Ukrainian teams, understandably so, are not that great at the moment. Those are more or less easy points. That Nice is more or less a walkover for Lazio is something I did not expect at all. We also saw another Spanish team upset by Anderlecht, the team that I chose to wear at home. And that also is a little bit of a surprise how bad Spanish teams are. But look a little bit at the schedule of La Liga. La Liga already had two midweek rounds. They have a frantic pace. And I guess in Europe, they are kind of letting it cruise a little bit because you have to stay alive in La Liga. And yes, Real Sociedad didn't have a great start anyway. At least Bilbao got a win as well. We also had the tie of the winners early on between Slavia and Ajax ended in a 1-1 one, one draw. All of the games that I called out that might be interesting turned out to be not that interesting at all. Let's also face that reality. Most interestingly is Roma lost at Elsborg and Galatasaray had a 2-0 lead at lowly RFS and were packed back to a draw. Kind of interesting. I'm already saying a whole lot of things ahead of my longer edits of the short videos where I go through each and every game. So I would say without further ado, I will start with these reviews now. I also decided since the current standings are not that interesting, I'm not going to comment much of them, but you will have the standings during the videos as well. And then we'll see each other on the other side with some projections and we look at the upcoming games as well. Let's look at the Europa League results from the early kickoffs. Spurs get a 2-1 away win at Ferencvaros. Very controlled, very professional performance. Ferencvaros had an early goal chopped off, but Saar and Brennan Johnson score two goals for Spurs before Varga pulls one back rather late. Hoffheim also breathes a slight sigh of relief, winning 2-0 at home to Dynamo Kiev's Lozhek scoring both goals. Ukrainian teams understandably not performing well this time around in Europe. Lazio are the table toppers after match day two with a very resounding 4-1 win over Nice. One-way traffic. Pedro and Castellanos score the first two, then out of nowhere, Borga pulls one back just before the half. However, Castellanos adds a third and then a Zakani penalty really put the stamp on Lazio's win. Midtjylland win in Belgrade against Maccabi Tel Aviv 2-0. In between both goals, Maccabi Tel Aviv had plenty of chances, however, Midtjylland were just a little bit more effective on the night. Reigning Conference League winners Olympiakos beat Braga at home 3-0. Tons of defensive frailties by Braga. Of course, El Kavi again scores a brace. The first one took a wicked deflection. Second one was a nice counter-attack. Heza gets the goal in between. Karabakh loses at home 2-1 to Malmö despite having an early lead, but it's quickly equalized by Bertheim and then Bertheim himself gets a winner in the 47th minute. No equalizer for Karabakh. Almost a similar story for Anderlecht. 2-1 away win at Real Sociedad, with the exception that all the goals came in the first half. Real Sociedad scoring the fifth minute through Marin, Halva Vasquez and Leone. Crazy shot from outside of the box. Turn the game around for Anderlecht, who get a rather famous win. RFS is 2 to draw against Galatasaray has to be considered one of the shockers of the evening, especially since Galatasaray had a 2-0 lead in the 30th minute. However, Ikaunix pulls one back just before the half and then Ocharia gets an equalize in the 55th minute. Points drop for Galatasaray, that much is for certain. And in a duel of two match day one winners, Slavia and Ajax play out a 1-1 draw. Ajax took the lethal funding moment in the first half, it was a penalty. Seemed in control of the game, however, second half, Slavia come back. Jurasek assists Kori, heads it in from a short distance. Then Slavia pushing, even Bas was sent off for Ajax, but Ajax hang on. As for the late kickoffs, Athletic Club are one of two Spanish teams that get a win in this week. It's a 2-0 over AZ with Nico Williams first assisting his brother in the 76. 
second and then Sunset in the 85th minute for 2-0 win. If you only see the final 3-1 away win for Frankfurt Besiktas, you would think this was a dominant performance. However, it was all about goalie Santos, who kept Frankfurt very much in the game and Frankfurt being very effective. Marmouche scoring a penalty in the 90th minute. Uh, Bimbe, three minutes later, doubles the lead. However, then it's a penalty given for Besiktas that Immobile sees easily safe. Knauf adds a third one and then Santos, who had many great saves, makes the one goalkeeping mistakes to allow Besiktas one consolation goal. The shock of the Europa League evening had to be Elsberg beating Roma 1-0 at home, winning goal coming from a Baidu penalty. Of course, Roma tried to get an equalizer, but more than a Pellegrini shot hitting the crossbar was not in the cards. Very disappointing for Roma. In Porto, we of course saw the game of the evening in all competitions. Porto 3, Manchester United 3. This is a game that really had it all. United had an early 2-0 lead through Rashford and Hoyland. Great run by Rashford. Uh, before the half, Pepe and Samu had actually equalized for Porto would it even take the lead through Samo right after the half and it really didn't look good for United for most of the time especially when Bruno Fernandes sent off with a yellow red card very contentious one that one I gotta say I'm not sure if I would have said anything enough but straight back race to Eriksen crosses in for Maguire who heads in an equalizer for United I'm not sure though if this will be enough to save the job for Eric Ten Hag and I'm sure that United fans probably are thinking at this moment maybe it's even better to let him go another shocker was also FCSB winning at Pauk 1-0 in the meeting of the Greek and the Romanian champions. The goal came through Billy Gea after Olaru assists deep into stoppage time of the first half. Olaru then is sent off rather ridiculously because he grabs the ball when he's actually fouled. In the end, Pau can only muster a shot to the post. Very disappointing honestly. There was a lot of buzz surrounding Pilsen after they got the draw at Eintracht Frankfurt. However, this time around Pilsen only managed a goalless draw against Ludogorets and were lucky because the Piotrowski penalty was easily saved. Otherwise, Ludogorets would have gotten the win. Lyon's 4-1 away win at Rangers not only erased eyebrows but it was very similar to Celtic's defeat at Dortmund. Plenty of goals scored early on for Fanat giving Lyon the lead then Lawrence quickly equalizes, Lacazette re-establishes the lead and then Rangers more or less fall apart. Lacazette makes it 3 1 just before the half, and Fofana adds his second goal in the second half. Emphatic 4 1 win for Olympic Lyonnais. The sleeper tie of the round between Union Saint Gilles and Bode Klimt ends with a sleepy 0 0. Union Saint Gilles having more chances, however, the biggest chance fell to Jens Peter Hauge, who with a shot only hits the crossbar. And lastly, Fenerbahce salvage a 1 1 draw at 20. Vlap gave 20 the lead in the first half. Tadic formerly Ajax captain, equalizes for Fenerbahce, who now are on four points. Maybe Mourinho is right, the Europa League is better for them. If you look down at the projections, I mean Spurs are still very much on top of the game, but Lyon moved up, Lazio stay up there, Athletic Club Anderlecht surprisingly high, Frankfurt, Galatasaray and Ajax. Those are the eight teams that would make it directly in the round of 32, currently on average. United will have to go into a playoff for now, as do Olympiakos, Slavia, Fenerbahce, Hoffenheim, FCSB, Midtjylland and Braga. You ask where is Roma? Yeah, we have to already look at the second slide. Where? First there's Bode, Klimt and Nice. And I'm not sure if Nice will actually stay long in there, but then there are quite a few notable teams. Porto, Real Sociedad and Roma. Almost on the outside looking in. AZ, Malmö and Rangers just above the line. Twente with only two draws. And dare I say, Twente got a draw only at Manchester United. Maybe it doesn't count for as much. We have to see for now. They're on the outside looking in as are the other teams. Of course, I'm also looking at Pauk where, yeah, the start did not go well for them. When I look at the upcoming round, which will be played on the 23rd and 24th of October. Yes, there are two games on Wednesday played very early on. Braga against Bode and Galatasaray against Elfsburg. Given how Elfsburg have been playing, that actually might not be a bad game. But overall... I was initially a little bit struggling finding a standard tie until I saw Fenerbahce against United. Mourinho taking on United. That is for sure going to produce quite some headlines. So I think that's the game to watch. For some reason, Spurs against AZ. Was there something previous? I don't know. And let's see what Lazio will do at 20. The Dutch teams have not been doing too badly in this competition. So I'm curious. And you know, the other Dutch team, Ajax, have to go to Karabakh. Park Pilsen? Hmm, that's must win I think for both of them already and Roma better get three points against Dinamo Kiev. Okay, 
that was my little review of the Europa League action. Please, if I have missed anything or you want to add anything to what I've said, I try to keep the video short. Use the comments below. I love to hear from you as well. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And there will be more Europa League reviews coming. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!